those things are really important. But as with the most things in life, action speaks louder than words, isn't it? Which is why we have this really weird, we're in this weird funky spot with the whole fat movement, right? Fat acceptance where you ha- you're seeing happening a bit with Lizzo and some of the stuff I've seen with Adele, the backlash, which is really strange because Adele didn't say nothing. But Adele posted the picture of her, um, I think, I'm, I'm going to say she threw a Christmas party, it looked like, right? Where she kind of posted these really cool black and white pictures with her, with a Santa, with a guy dressed up as Santa and a few of her friends or a few people, I've, I guess, who kind of... Um, uh, support her in the music and she looked considerably skinnier than she has done before right and if you've known Adele you know that she's always been a bit of a bigger girl right so it's pretty obviously someone like that especially for a girl that size when they lose that amount that amount of weight you can straight away tell it from the face right they, they get a bit of a jawline their cheeks sink in a bit and just generally looks a bit more you know slimmer uh, a lot more healthier let's say quote unquote which probably some people would argue against or say oh yeah there's nothing you know you can be healthy and fat which you know is is up for debate but you see a lot of weird reactions with that even, right? Where people are freaking out about people celebrating the fact that they'll lost weight, but then they also, at the same token, want you to accept and allow and not kind of tease Lisa for like flaunting her weight around the place, right? And try to not normalize that, but essentially trying to um, rewrite social norms in that regard where we kind of, you know, maybe attribute a sexy figure to somebody that looks like, you know, an Emily Rajakowski, whatever it may be, right? So we're in a weird place overall, I think, as a society. So those things do provide some kind of framework. Those Tony Robbins cast, they do provide something, uh, some, something that someone to point to point towards, right? I don't think you should make them your messiah, like a Jordan Peterson sort of thing, right? You should maybe take his message to heed, right? Take the concept of clean your own room and apply it to your life. Try and be a noble person. Do right by your friends and family, all that sort of stuff. But that should be about it. It shouldn't be about them kind of replacing Jesus Christ or Allah or Buddha or whatever, right? They should just be somebody you take a kind of, you know, philosophical framework or a life framework adopted to your life rinse and repeat and then kind of move on from there but i guess it's just too much work in it for some most people just even saying it out loud even I've, I've noticed with my running and my training you just get to a point where you realize why people are lazy i think that's that's the i think that's the humility that fighters speak about i hear a lot about and people always say oh when you mean an mma fighter it's a really brutal sport watching somebody two men in a cage pummel each other right and hit each other with elbows and knees and cut the skin and stuff and bleed everywhere get choked out unconscious sometimes they don't want to tap it can be uncomfortable to watch but you know that's that 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 is life but whenever you have met whenever i've heard somebody who's come across or spoken to or been in the company of an mma fighter they always say they're the most down-to-earth chillest guy in a room because obviously intrinsically they have the knowledge that you know they can defend themselves because for a large part especially when it comes to men having that kind of chip on your shoulder and being a bit aggro and being a bit nasty comes from this idea that you feel inadequate. So if ever you worked with a manager who's a bit chirpy, has a bad attitude and just generally talks to you like shit, it's usually because of stuff they're dealing with internally. It's never to do with you, most of the time, anyway. Sometimes it can be you and you can sometimes look in the mirror and say, okay, maybe I'm pissing off my manager because I come in late all the time. I don't have any of my work on time, blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, most managers who are like that, who are kind of cunty, you know, they're dealing with stuff. So when you meet somebody like an MMA fighter who kind of, you know, has essentially aced or figured out a way to defend themselves against other men, right? And kind of enforce their will on them. Then there, there comes a point where you don't, you know, you don't really feel threatened by the average Joe on the street, right? You're comfortable in situations because essentially through training, you've essentially been able to tear yourself down to the core and build yourself up back again continually every single day, right? You hear even jujitsu people, you hear them speak about getting tapped out by blue belts and stuff, right? If you're a black belt and stuff, it can happen. You can get caught if you're lackadaisical. That humbles you again, right? It lets you know, okay, if I don't, you know, if I don't concentrate, if I don't take this stuff seriously, you know, somebody that's been doing this for a year can tap me out. So that can that can help things. But I guess if you're haven't got that direction and you feel a bit lost, you can get a bit chippy, and you sometimes, you know, end up doing this weird thing where every day turns into like a weird battle. You're wasting all this time fighting these insignificant fights, and when something comes along your way that you actually need to defend yourself against, you've got no will no desire to no energy no clarity of mind to actually address it in a really coherent way which probably explains why people get into weird twitter spats in it i would that always made me laugh but I, i'd imagine if you were famous it would be a bit different i don't really get that many notifications but i'd imagine if you got your phones blaring up and you've got 99 plus on your on every single social media app right and it's always pinging right every time you go you log into it so it's kind of the bubbles are popping up it can get a bit disconcerting to think that bloody hell man most of those comments are going to be nasty right to kind of wade through them but i just find it funny most of that stuff isn't you know it's not real really for the most part it's real in some respects someone's writing it but 
they're only writing it based on the perception that you put out there on the web. And for the most part, we've all got these weird perceptions we put out on the internet, innit? I know I have. I have a different persona than what I have on the internet, maybe it's for on to, on, in real life. It's probably close to it. It's not like I'm pretending to be somebody else, but it's a persona that you put on online, innit? You just can't help it once you get in front of a camera, which probably explains why. I'm going into different rambles, but you know, this is a podcast. What can you do? It probably explains why um live podcasts don't really sound that great when you when you're not in the audience. If you've ever listened to a live podcast recording, it sounds a bit strange. It sounds a bit performative, which is understandable, right? You can't help it. Imagine if you're Bill Burr or you're me, and you suddenly get in front of us. You suddenly on in, on a stage talking to people. Well, if mate, you're doing this recording and you're doing it on a stage in front of people, you're naturally going to start performing because you're gonna hear people responding to different things that you say that you don't even think is funny, but some people don't think it's funny. Then you might be, oh, okay, cool. You're going to start riding into that, pushing it a bit too far. We've all been in groups like that, right? In pubs and stuff when a guy or girl comes around who kind of, you know, really flogs that dead horse, right? He's really going for that joke again and again, just not letting it go. Dad joke after dad joke after dad joke. We've all been there, right? And usually, you know, they get the hint because everyone walks away, right? For the most part, everyone goes to the toilet at the same time. But in, on the stage, it's quite hard to take that hint, which is probably why live podcasts sound a bit strange when you hear when you listen back because you're not in the room. There's no context for it, which is why I, I always makes me laugh when you get those bloggers that get offended about comedians' jokes and then they type them up into a blog. You know, it's devoid. Any kind of humor is kind of stripped away from it, isn't it? You're kind of layering it bare on a on a screen somewhere, right? In, you know, 10p font.